coming to the specific uh, injuries like uh, head trauma so head trauma is basically the primary survey remains the same a b c d e and neurological examination also remains the same uh, but we, here we need to assess whether the patient is oriented to time place person pupillary reaction is very important and urgent ct scan is very very important the ct scan will help us to evaluate whether what kind of bleeding it is if it is extradural hematoma which is which has high propensity to expand and further deterioration of the neurological status is also expected so this patient may need immediate uh, surgical decompression or probably craniectomy also may be required so we need to keep on assessing the neurological status consciousness of the patient and uh, possible uh, raised intracranial hypertension should be evaluated each and um, minute to minute and hour to hour so bradycardia hypo, uh, hypertension and pupillary asymmetry gives you enough clue about possibility of raised intracranial pressure and possible herniation so these patients need immediate intervention so looking at the neck trauma so neck trauma uh, is basically divided into three zones uh, zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 in the zone 1 injuries are particularly below the cricoid cartilage so thyroid cartilage and below the thyroid cartilage we have cricoid cartilage so any injuries uh, below the cricoid cartilage uh, up to uh, up to the uh, cricoid cartilage we call it as zone 1 and the uh, uh, zone 2 uh, is basically uh, uh, bit, um, uh, between the uh, zone 1 and zone 3 and zone 3 is basically above the angle of the mandible okay so uh, so if the injuries are above the angle of the mandible it is very likely that the oropharyngeal injuries and the nasal injuries and the eye injury and the brain injury is very very common so injuries below the cricoid cartilage will lead to cervical spine injury okay cervical spine injury will lead to uh, you know, may, see, grievous injuries to the cervical spine will lead to <laughs> quadriplegia, and injuries above uh, uh, the zone three will lead to brain damage. So this this uh, assessment will give you enough idea about uh, the severity of the injury also. So neck trauma basically is associated with the vascular injury. There are there are um, important uh, vascular structures right from carotid to jugular veins and. Uh, jugular uh, uh, veins if it bleeds it can bleed massively if the carotid artery is injured uh, it can lead to death uh, even the direct compression uh, may not help in these patients surgical intervention uh, uh, is very very important this patient should be taken to uh, uh, operating room and uh, uh, this patient should be uh, treated surgically so uh, uh very important uh, to look for the um, uh, vascular injuries uh, apart from the vascular injuries there can be laryngeal injury or tracheal injury if the patient has laryngeal injury or tracheal injury injury there is an airway threat and these patients will remain hypoxemic and these patients may have difficult intubation and uh, uh, severe uh, severe hypoxemia uh, will be very very important difficult intubation uh, and difficult ventilation also is uh, uh, is also possible in these patients esophageal injuries are also associated with the penetrating neck injury it may not manifest early but later on it may manifest with uh, a growing uh, swelling in the neck and uh, it is also associated with increased morbid morbidity and mortality if not addressed because it may lead to mediastinal uh, hematoma mediastinal uh, uh, mediastinitis and it is very difficult to treat and the exploration of esophageal injury also uh, very invasive surgery so as far as the resuscitation is concerned the resuscitation is uh, surgical exploration and uh, any expanding hematoma or any subcute emphysema uh, or tracheal deviation or change in quality or air bubbling through the wound give you enough uh, idea about enough idea about uh, the neck injury or possible uh, important structures like tracheobronchial injury and it has to be addressed immediately so these patients the pulse should be palpated continuously and uh, auscultation of brui and the neck will give you enough idea about uh, the carotid injuries so neurological examination along with the neck uh, 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 examination is very very important so as far as the management is concerned so the management is surgical 
and the investigation may be angiography is the bronchoscopy esophagoscopy and the ct scan uh, is very important as far as the spinal trauma is concerned spinal trauma is one of the uh, you know uh, uh, disabilitating injuries the patient will remain incapacitated for lifelong if it is not addressed immediately so but in spinal trauma also like brain trauma uh, the primary focus is on airway breathing circulation the primary survey secondary survey remains the same but the spinal cord injuries will be associated with abrasion laceration or deformities of the spine the abrasion lacerations are particularly on the back and uh, on palpation of the back, when we do log rolling, there will be uh, significant pain. And uh, on neurological examination, there will be a neuro deficit. Uh, there will be flaccid paralysis of the extremities. Uh, the cranial nerves may be intact. And, but the motor examination will show the flaccid paralysis. Even the sensory examination will, uh, be, uh, uh, will be significant enough to show you that there is significant sensory loss. There will be loss of superficial reflexes, there will be loss of rectal tone, and there will be incontinence because the control of the bladder is lost and there will be a bowel incontinence also. So uh, spinal cord injuries are basically uh, treated with uh, vasopressor support. Uh, steroids can be given immediately, but the recommendations are still not very strong. And vasopressor support is the key. Uh, along with the uh, surgical uh, correction immediately. So prevention of the further injury is the key here, like stabilizing patient, immobilization of the patient with the, you know, uh, uh, with the spine board uh, is very, very important. If these patients have, uh, are moved, okay, the partial injury, partial spinal cord injury can get converted into complete spinal cord injury. So immobilization is the key in spinal cord injuries. As far as thoracic trauma is concerned, uh, so whenever we suspect thoracic trauma, the uh, pericardial tamponade uh, is one of the commonest uh, finding and it, it is assessed with the 2D echocardiography, but clinical finding of a pericardial tamponade will be dilated neck veins, we call it as backstride, dilated neck veins, uh, muffled heart sound and uh, hypotension, low pulse is the classical finding of pericardial tamponade and treatment is needle pericardial synthesis. A needle is passed through the epigastric region and uh, you know the blood is aspirated and you know uh, a pigtail can be kept there because the bleeding may be ongoing and further later on uh, surgical open thoracotomy and treatment of the pericardial uh, injury, uh, uh, the hidden injury inside should be um, treated surgically. So blunt cardiac trauma should be identified with ECG. Uh, it is usually seen in patients with the motor vehicle accident, fall, crash, and any blast and direct violent trauma on the chest will lead to blunt cardiac trauma. Uh, pneumothorax is basically identified with the uh, chest X-ray, the, out of which the tension pneumothorax is more life-threatening, a needle decompression in the fifth intercostal space for adults and second intercostal space for children. Uh, is recommended and once the needle decompression is done, uh, our tube thoracotomy uh, you know, ICD insertion should be done because once the needle is removed, there is a very high chance that the pneumothorax can occur again. So a simple pneumothorax uh, may not be, you know, may not need ICD insertion, but it should be confirmed with the X-ray. If the patient's saturation is well maintained, uh, there is no need for ICD. But if the pneumothorax is significant, which is compromising hemodynamics like tension pneumothorax, it, it is basically life-threatening and it has to be treated immediately. But a pneumothorax can be observed, 100% uh, oxygen with high concentration mask is sufficient enough for simple pneumothorax, which can get absorbed later on. Uh, hemothorax is one more finding that can be identified in thoracic trauma. If the uh, blood, more than 200 ml of blood uh, is seen in uh, you know, chest X-ray or measured with the help of ultrasound, uh, uh, it is a significant hemothorax and ICD insertion and the decompression is important. So as far as the abdominal trauma is concerned, so abdominal trauma is basically can be due to direct injury. Uh, 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 the, sometimes the bullet injuries or the blunt injuries, the penetrating injuries are also common with the common in abdominal trauma. The stab injury or penetrating injury is due to 
uh, the direct damage uh, or or dislodgement of the object inside the blood injury blunt injuries are basically can lead to uh, uh, can, can lead to hidden injuries to the liver solid organ injury is very very common uh, so it can it can result from direct uh, injuries direct blow or crush injury or decelerating uh, decelerating injuries can be uh, the cause of blunt injuries so basically when we have a gunshot uh, injuries the gunshot injuries can be significant because it causes three types of injuries the injury from the direct injury from the bullet injury from the fragmentations which separate from the bullet and um, and the shock that results uh, from the indirect but the patient uh, remains exsanguinated because of the significant bleeding uh, so that can be a cause so physical examination uh, is very very important the physical examination uh, is can show you echymotic areas if the patient has seat belt sign uh, especially in the motor vehicular accident the echymotic uh, sign echymotic area found in the distribution of the lower abdominal injury uh, can lead to perforation of the bladder or bowel and can also cause lumbar distraction fractures if there is a peri, peri umbilical echymosis uh, it, it may be an indicative of intraperitoneal hemorrhage if there is a bleeding in the retroperitoneal uh, area so it can show a flank echymosis and uh, if there is a pain in the uh, left shoulder or pain radiating to the neck the splenic injury should be considered and uh, these patients uh, sh should be evaluated with uh, chest x ray and abdominal x ray uh, uh, and ct scan is very very important if there is a perforation the, there will be a fluid uh, or a air 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 in, uh, in the right side of the diaphragm will give you enough clue that there is perforation and uh, diaphragmatic injuries can be ruled out with chest x ray uh, the blurring of the diaphragm or the hemothorax or the bowel gas pattern above the diaphragm uh, give you enough clue that there is possible diaphragmatic injuries the diaphragmatic inju uh, abdominal injuries can be treated with uh, diagnostic peritoneal lavage ct scan is very very important if the patient has a significant hemorrhage in the abdomen the angiography should be done to find out where uh, the bleeding is coming from because once the patient is explored and the bleeding vessel is not identified then it becomes very difficult so you know if the patient is stable hemodynamically preemptive angiography and identification of the bleeding vessel is very very important hemostatic agents can be used tranexamic acid is recommended nowadays uh, so uh, uh, these agents should be used and laparoscopic minimally invasive interventions as far as possible can uh, be advocated in this patient so patients with the pancreatic injuries the mechanism is largely penetrating injuries 75 percent of the patients will have penetrating injury history and they may have injuries to the aorta portal vein or inferior vena cava so these are the patients which will be uh, uh, you know presenting with a shock and uh, their uh, diagnosis is on the basis of examination and mostly sometimes it is diagnosed during laparotomies so the identification of pancreatic injuries can be done by serum myelase lipase and ct can show you a uh, fracture of the uh, uh, pancreas uh, and then in intraperitoneal hematoma there will be a uh, fluid collection in the laser sac and uh, uh, there will be retroperitoneal uh, collection and um, uh, if the pancreatic duct is injured retro uh, ercp can be done so genito urinary trauma uh, is uh, associated with the pelvic trauma cysto urothrography can be a uh, good diagnostic tool to identify uh, the pelvic trauma and associated injury uh, the signs and symptoms of genito urinary trauma will be pain in the flank area blood in the urethral meatus or ecchymosis uh, on the perineum or genital area or evidence of fracture pelvis uh, or the rectal bleeding or high riding prostate is a possible clue for genito urinary urinary trauma if the patient has pelvic fracture the stabilization of the pelvis is very very important initially manual and then it can be uh, uh, stabilized with the uh, help of uh, pelvic binders okay but frequent examination of the pelvis should be avoided because every time you are trying to examine the pelvis the compression distraction 
uh, is, is done. So it can again lead to more and more bleeding. So once confirmed pelvic fracture, further examination uh, should be awarded and patient should be posted for uh, fixation, either external fixation or internal fixation, depending upon the severity of the injury. But uh, genital urinary trauma can be uh, can present with exaggeration, gross hematuria, and uh, they will be hemodynamically unstable because the blood loss may be significant. And uh, uh, so basically, a uh, retrograde cystourethrogram um, uh, should be done before placing the Foley's catheter. So in case of bladder rupture, uh, the blood collection will be in the intraperitoneal area. A surgical repair is very, very important. But if uh, the bladder rupture is extraperitoneal, uh, so it, it is usually due to pelvic fracture. And uh, surgical uh, management uh, is done by Foley's catheterization. But if it is intraperitoneal bladder rupture, the surgical repair is very, very, uh, very much necessary. So urethral injuries are common due to uh, the, during these pelvic traumas. Surgical repair uh, or suprapubic cystoscomy, cystoscomy should be done, and uh, associated concomitant renal injuries should be ruled out when the urethral injuries are identified. And uh, when the patient has renal injuries. It is commonly diagnosed with a CT scan. And if the patient has grade 4 or grade 5 uh, injury to the kidneys, uh, surgical intervention should be advocated. So these are the uh, gradings of the renal injury. And depending upon the injury severity, the intervention should be advocated. So uh, if there is a, a injury of a higher degree, probably the nephrectomy may also be done. It's OK. So coming to burns, so burns, the management remains the same, airway breathing circulation, primary survey is very, very important to identify specific areas and percentage of the burn, how much is the percentage of the burn, uh, that will give you enough clue about the outcome of the patient. Uh, so uh, if, the, if the, the burn should also be, uh, you know, measured in terms of uh, uh, percentage and uh, how much body surface area is affected. So basically, uh, so basically, uh, th this is the uh, chart which gives you the different areas uh, which may be affected with the burn and percentage of the burn can be uh, identified. So basically, the resuscitation remains the same. Fluid resuscitation is uh, the clue and uh, prevention of the infection is important. And the management of these patients to the dedicated burn area uh, is very, very important. And they may need massive fluid resuscitation because these patients uh, usually develop extensive capillary leak. So they will uh, need a lot of fluid resuscitation. And uh, that's why uh, uh, these patients should be dedicatedly treated in burn area. So common GI injuries will be laceration to the liver, contusion, and uh, retroperitoneal injuries. So these injuries uh, should be managed with the uh, involvement of the GI surgeon and uh, a multidisciplinary approach is very, very important. 